Hi, this is John with Estimator for SketchUp, and welcome to part one in our video series of how we're going to take this cool uh, Estimator retreat model and um, generate quantity takeoffs and estimates for this entire project. So in the first phase we're going to talk about is we're going to get through the foundation stage. So I'm going to go um, right away to my excavation tab. And you can see here that I've got uh, construction fencing down the side properties and silt fencing across the back. Um, and I just have a very simple site here that's excavated for the footings. Um, you, can, uh, you can do this in lots of different ways with your sites. Um, I'm going to keep this very simple for this exercise. So, um, but let's, let's make sure that we add pricing to everything and I'll show you how that works. So remember with our items database, I want to keep that open at all times or minimized so that I can make any changes to my items database or cost changes or adding materials or adding products that, you know, I uh, didn't have in there before. We do it all in here and then we save it and then we can sync the database over an estimator. So let's open up estimator. All right. And um, so what we're going to be doing is selecting each one of these things sort of one by one. Uh, and going through and, and adding information. So um, we start up, there's nothing selected. So the components, layers, materials, tabs are not working as we previously discussed. So um, the first thing we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna do something for excavation just to have something in there. Now I could make this uh, component here. Um, I could make that assign a price for excavation to, to that ground or I could use the quotes. So I'm gonna just come in and start typing in excavation. And there's my excavation per hour for my subcontractor. Um, and I'm gonna put in um, five hours, I already had that in there. So let's, let's say it's five hours at $110 per hour. So that's our first quote that we're gonna add in there. Now you notice nothing's displayed in the cost yet because we don't have this box selected include quotes. When I include quotes, the quote will show up. Now the purpose for that is that in theory, when you're done with the project, you select everything, you include your quotes, you can include your margin. Uh, let's say that it's 20%. You can include your, your margin in that. Um, and then that's gonna change the dollar amount. And then, uh, so that's what we do at the end of the project. So for now, I'm gonna cut those off. So the first thing, uh, we already talked about the project tab, and I'm gonna just click on that real quick. This is where you would put in your project information. And remember, this is saved with the file. So you can put in the job location and so forth. We already talked about uh, the items database and Costco's databases. So we'll, we'll move directly on to uh, working with our pricing. So we've already added our quote for excavation. All right, let's take um, this uh, silt fence and construction fencing. Now, I used Profile Builder to create this fencing. Uh, this is Profile Builder up here, and that's a whole other video, but I used an, created an assembly that puts these stakes in it, it, my spacing that I wanted, and then the, the textured material here for the fencing, and same for silt fencing. Um, so you might want to check out that plugin. It's a really awesome tool for recording, uh, for generating that kind of geometry. But the way that I'm using it in, in this case, to get my, I'm using the area of this fence divided by the uh, height of it uh, to get my rolls. Um, so what we're gonna do, let's take a look at the materials tab. And let's say that we're talking about our uh, construction fencing, okay? I choose this material that was called construction fencing. That's why it showed up in the dropdown. So if I come into my description and start typing in fence, I can see I've got construction fencing installation I've got construction fencing stakes, uh, and I have construction fencing by the roll. So this is the material. So I'm gonna select that tab and just click into the next one. And you'll see my cost code auto-populated, and it took the square feet attribute of that material, divided by a four, because it's four feet tall, divided by 100, because there's a 100 foot roll. And now that I've got that, I've got my, my unit rate of $32 per roll, and we're set. Um, now, if I, if I want to add the labor in there. I'm just going to click on this little plus button right here, and I'm going to come in, start typing in fencing, and there's the installation labor. Click in the next field, and now that it's going to take the um, it's going to take the square feet divided by four for the lineal footage, because it's two dollars and fifty cents per lineal foot installed. 
So that's as quick as uh, we can do it right there. We've got our construction fencing. Now those stakes are actually components. So if I go to components and I go to uh, snow fence stake, you can see I've got 20 of those in there. And uh, in this case, I'm gonna start typing in my fence again. And I can see my stakes for the construction fencing are here. Click on the next tab and that's in the components tab that I've got 20 of them at $189. Uh, you can see the subtotals up in here. So now we have our silt fencing, which is done back on materials again. And I'm going to choose silt fence. So with silt fencing, these stakes actually come attached to the roll the way that I buy them. So I'm going to come in here and just start typing in silt fencing. And I'm going to do my three by 100 foot roll with stakes, clicking on that, clicking in the next tab. Now, if I had a vendor in there, he would show up in the vendor tab. And I don't, I don't have my vendor in this generic model takes the square feet divided by three feet tall divided by 100 for the rolls of, of uh, silt fencing. So I also pay for the labor on that if I click plus and I start typing in silt and there it is for my labor. You can see it's taking the attribute of square feet divided by three and I pay 250 a lineal foot to have that installed. So we're getting there now where we've got um, we've got everything established for this fencing. So now let's look at a little closer to the project here. We've got some uh, sauna tubes in this area here. So if I go to components and choose 12 inch sauna tube, um, obviously I got to buy a full piece and cut it up to get those pieces in there. So if I start typing in sauna tube, there's a 12 foot piece. So I'm going to buy one 12 foot piece at 1850 each um, for my sauna tube. All right. We get drilling in a little closer in here and uh, we'll see that I've got our, our uh, we've got some rebar chairs in here and our number four rebar. So I'm going to click on one of the, um, on this little group in here. This is all in a group just to control its visibility. So if I go into my components in here and I choose this rebar chair, you can see I've got 30 of them in there. So I'm going to start typing in rebar and Let's see if I got it under chair. So there's a foundation chair double box of 40. So I've got one box because it's taking the the total divided by 40 because there's 40 in a box and the boxes are $25 each and we're rounding up to the nearest box. So simple as that. We've got our rebar chairs. The rebar is actually on a layer and I modeled that using profile builder and a profile for rebar that I've created. And I'll share all of my uh, profiles and assemblies with anybody who asks for those. I'll try to remember, put a link up on the website for that as well. So in this case, I've got my rebar number four is the layer that this rebar is on. So if I start typing in rebar and there's my number four rebar material and it's taking the total, uh, total attribute of feet divided by 20 and it's $12 per stick because it's a 20 foot stick that I buy them in and I'm putting a waste factor 20% in there because it always seems to take a lot. So there's my rebar, okay? Um, so that's taking care of everything that we see so far in the model. We've got our rebar, our chairs, our sauna tube. So let's go to the next tab and go to footings. Now in this case, I've got my concrete is poured now. So if I click on my footing, um, the footings are on a layer. Again, I modeled this with Profile Builder, but you can do it with standard uh, native techniques and push pull. I did it with Profile Builder uh, modeling this perimeter so that I could get the lineal footage because I pay for the footings, both the concrete material, but I also pay for uh, taking the lineal footage. So in this case, we're in our layers tab. We're on our footings layer, and I'm going to start typing in footings. And here I got footing concrete, 3000 PSI. So it's taking the attribute of cubic yards and I don't have any waste in there. I really should add waste. Uh, and I'm not gonna change that in here. This would be a good opportunity to show you this in the items database. So let's go to the items database. All right, so let's find our footing concrete in here and go ahead and put 20% waste in there. Uh, I'm gonna put 20% waste. I know that it may be high in some locations, but I'm just putting it in as 20. Um, so we've added waste in a couple of these factors in here. So now I'm going to hit save. Then when I come back over uh, to SketchUp, I'm going to come in and hit this 
sync items uh, with items database. You can see my footing uh, changed, footing concrete changed, and that's what we want to see. Now I've got my 20% in there. Okay, so that's how quick and easy it is to sync up the database. So there's my concrete quantity. I've got five cubic yards at $631. So I'm going to pay a, uh, a, my guy per foot. So I'm going to add a plus button up in here. And I'm going to put in footing, see if I can't find the footing labor per lineal foot. Okay, so that's what we want right there. All right, and then so uh, in this case, it's taking the lineal footage only, that that's what it's using, okay? So in this case, it's $10 per lineal foot or $740.74 feet. Okay, so that's our footings. We've also got these vertical pieces of number four rebar that we've got in there. Um, and since we've already assigned that um, to that layer of foundation rebar number four, then we've already got our pricing for the rebar there. All right. And if the other thing we have in here is we've got these little post bases. So I'm going to say components and choose this post base. Uh, this is for the timber frame element that's going out front. So I can start typing in uh, post custom post base. You see, I got two of them in there and uh, they're $100 uh, total. Um, so that we have pretty much everything current. Uh, at any time, we could just select everything or control A. And we're up to $2,000 already. Okay, so let's go to the next tab where we have our foundation wall. Now this foundation wall is then out of concrete. You could use CMU and you could actually um, add uh, formulas in there for all of your um, your block, your mortar, your sand, and everything. Uh, so in this case, let's look at, I'm doing it out of concrete. So it's under my layer of stem wall that's eight by 24. So what I wanna do is come in and um, we're gonna add our pricing. In this case, uh, same token, I'm gonna go lineal footage, but I'm also gonna go with my um, uh, concrete quantity. So I'm going to start typing in foundation and now I've got foundation concrete material. So I've got four cubic yards for my foundation concrete. But I also want to add in by clicking the plus button I want to add in for labor. So I click, click on the plus button. So for the labor I'm going to start typing in foundation uh, labor. Let's see if I can find that under labor foundation stem wall per lineal foot. Okay, so in my case, I pay $15 per lineal foot, and so I've got 74 feet, all right? So there's my foundation in there. All right, I've also got these anchor bolts. So let's say under our components, we find our half-inch anchor bolts. We've got 19 of those. I'm going to go under description and start typing in anchor, and there are my anchor bolts. Click in the next field, and it records those. So now we're getting uh, all set there. So next we have our slab. Uh, no, actually, before we have our slab, we have our gravel. So in this case, I'm going to select the gravel that we have in here. Now, I've put the gravel on a layer, um, and it's okay, the sub uh, foundation sub gravel. I'm going to come into the description, and I'm going to start typing in gravel, and there I have it, gravel material. And it's taken the cubic yards times 1.5 to convert it to tons. And these multipliers are just simple multipliers uh, that you need to convert, um, you know, uh, one unit to another. So I've got my my gravel in there, and I've already got these rebar chairs and uh, the rebar in there. So that's how it's already showing up as a price. So now we're left with our slab. So when I select on the slab, now here's where we're going to add quite a few things. I put I always put slabs on my layers tab, and then. The idea here is that um, once I've entered in all this information, once you've done any of these things that you're going to do over and over again, you can either export these layers as assemblies and import them into another file somewhere, or you can um, save this as your template file so that each time you model a slab, you instantly will have all of the cost associated with it. So in this case, let's say that we, um, we're going to start out by saying, uh, let's do the concrete. So let's say slab concrete, structural slabs, 3,500 PSI concrete, cubic yards, so that we have four cubic yards. I'm going to hit the plus button and I'm going to have my finishing labor. So finish, uh, let's see, slab concrete labor house slab. There we go. 
So I'm paying a buck a square foot to have that finished. I'm going to further add another one because I need my poly that goes underneath it, my poly underlayment, if I spelled it correctly. So there's my vapor barrier, 16 by 100 foot roll. So I need one roll of that. Um, I'm going to come in and also add my form work because I got to pay my carpenter to form this up. So I'm going to type in form and concrete forms. I'm going to type in form work sub quote. Um, and there we go. It's 75 cents a square feet. All right. Then I've also in my area, I have to do termite treatment. So I'm going to type in uh, termite treatment uh, and use the area of the slab to um, to get that quantity. So we'll type in termite, if I can get the right space, termite protection per square foot at 20 at 30 cents a square foot. So there we go. So that's pretty much everything that's uh, in up through the foundation stage. Now we've got a brand new, uh, let's, let's select everything here. All right, and it will show up, it's calculating. So we're up to $6,000 here. So we have a brand new feature now uh, with Estimator. If we go to Extensions and Estimator Inspection, when I click on that, it's going to be searching the model. You can see the hourglass is working. It's searching the model to find anything that does not have pricing associated with it. So in this case, as we're looking, um, the, the excavation we talked about already, uh, so this says review components and assign data, hit escape when done. So in this case, we didn't want to assign pricing um, to, the, um, to the lot. So we're fine with leaving that as is. Now these rebar chairs are showing up, but we know we assigned pricing to those. So it's probably looking at it from a different standpoint of a layer or something like that. Let's see where components and let's see here, rebar chair number one. Ah, so those got coded a different name. So let's come in and say that, let's see, these guys here under components, rebar chair number one. Okay, so we have an issue where I thought we had assigned the pricing to that. So in this case, let's go ahead and do a description and say rebar chairs. Here's our foundation chairs. So we've got one box in here. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, we're gonna hit the escape tab to get back out of that inspector. And everything comes back. Okay, so now if I select everything, of course we're gonna see our total price and that box of the foundation chairs is going to be added in there. So we'll have a little slightly different dollar amount. So now when we run estimator inspection, we should only be left with just this chunk of earth that we were starting with. And that's it. Okay, so once we're done with that, we hit escape and it's gonna come back to where we started. So there we go. All right, so now we have, and I'm just gonna select everything again. So we've added all of our costs associated with the foundation for our estimator retreat model. And once this pulls up, we could always come in and say, include our quotes and include our margin. Uh, but we'll do that at the end of the job. If I go to project tab and hit HTML report, here comes this nice branded report with everything that you see that we've estimated so far. Okay, in a nice, easy to read report, I could actually change the reorder of the columns in here. Um, I could save it as a PDF or print it out. So that is the foundation for the estimator retreat model, and we hope you continue on with the next series of the videos. Thanks for watching.